Hi everyone, we're now to chapter four of our WYSIWYG training. I'm going to start this lesson uh, talking about how to hang lights. So WYSIWYG is principally above all else a lighting visualization software. So uh, building our lights, putting them into uh, the right positions on a, on a plan, making paperwork from that, so that's our you know, plans, all of our documents, patch sheets, all that sort of thing, that can all come out of this process. Uh, and obviously the, the final visualise output if you're using the, the full perform version of the software. So we're going to uh, take a little journey through the, uh, the way you can use the lighting tools in WYSIWYG. Um, and I just want to talk a bit about uh, some of my experiences here. There's, there's two different methods that I use to import lights. There's a, a manual method where you click and place lights uh, within the software, which is uh, by far the most popular way of uh, installing lights. The other way is to use uh, the importing tool, bringing in a CAD plan that has blocks and those blocks can be converted into lights and this works as well. So I use this sort of method when I'm working on a really big production. So when I did the, the Commonwealth Games ceremonies in Glasgow, that was about uh, 2000 lights that needed to be built. I imported the CAD plan, the CAD plan was very comprehensive, I, again I built it myself so I knew where everything was, I knew all the blocks were labelled correctly, I knew how they were labelled. So when I did the importer into WYSIWYG, it gave me an option to convert all the blocks into an actual fixture and swap them all out. But it's not an exact science, there's, there's mistakes that can occur because of that process, so I'll talk you through some of those as we go. For more generic uh, productions, that's very insulting, no, I mean call them generic, but for productions of maybe about you know two to three hundred lights or, or less, uh, the manual tool actually works quite nicely. So just bringing in a CAD plan as a uh, some sort of basis that you can use to draw off of. Uh, you can bring in a PDF or a JPEG or something that just shows where, where the lights are going to be and then you just insert the lights over the top of them. Um, and then I've got a uh, my own personal method for, for patching and, and channeling everything so everything's got the correct labels. Uh, there's about five different ways of doing it. Everyone have a different approach. Some people's approaches will be faster than mine. There'll be more effective ways of doing it. Some people import spreadsheets to do all the patch automatically. Uh, I have a process that I trust because it's worked for me on countless productions. So I, uh, I'm going to show you that method because this isn't necessarily just about me teaching you WYSIWYG. This is about teaching you my method of WYSIWYG. Um, other people would give you training and other ways of doing it as well. And, and their, their way is absolutely uh, valid as well. So this is just my point of view. So we're going to start off by looking at some of the most basic lighting tools. We're going to look at how we can insert a pipe, hang a light. We cover this in a, a limited way uh, in some of the earlier chapters when we were just looking at the, the basic tools. But we're going to go a little bit deeper now and start to think about how we can uh, put the lights in based around the production that we've uh, we've been working on, which is Jesus Christ Superstar. We're in lesson 22. We're going to look at pipes, trusses and hanging lights. So that rhymes nice, doesn't it? So this is where we got left uh, at the end of lesson 21, chapter 3, which was looking at how we can draw 3D objects and how we can draw our objects using the library system. We are... Uh, we need to move on now to lighting. So when I work with lighting, I tend to turn off everything that is already in my file. Uh, I've actually got a method that I use where I will turn off the, um, uh, I'll, sorry, I'll have one file that's purely for the scenery. So I'll have a file like this, and then I'll start a completely new file for lighting, and then you merge them together. You just go uh, into file merge, and then when you um, bring up your options, it has the option to merge in a WYSIWYG file, as long as everything has the same base point, 000, zero, zero. that's why I keep stressing how important that is. Um, you can bring in that file on top of the the old one and merge them at a later date. So for really large productions, this is what I do. Um, just uh, just so I've got a nice clean interface with no layers and things in the way. It just makes things a little bit easier. But for this production, I'm going to stay in the same file because I want to keep referring back to our layer systems. So I'm going to start by just turning off my scenery, um, which is the layer we created earlier. As you can see, there's some elements that we've imported since then that aren't in, in this layer. So I'm just going to select everything that I've missed. I'm going to right click, go to properties, and I'm going to find the layer I want to put them in, which I've been using down here, SV1 main for my scenery. Uh, and I will tie this up later and put it in some into some correctly named layers. But for now, this is fine. And I've got a working layer there that I have been using. A lot of this other stuff here isn't doing anything at the moment. We can probably get rid of these. Let's have a go. So if we want to get rid of a layer we're not using, if there's nothing on it, it will let you do it. If it doesn't delete it, it means there's something on it that you can't see. You've got a delete layers button up here. Let's click that. Are you sure to delete a shade? Yes, and it's gone. 
uh, we can do that by selecting several of these. So I'm going to go and select all these. Actually, I'm not going to select sex, that might be useful later. Uh, and hit delete. And there you go. Um, and zero. I don't think I can delete this one. I can, there we go. Um, so the reason that they came in at all is that there are some default layers that exist in AutoCAD and uh, they will always come in and you, once you've moved things off of them you delete them but there may not be anything on them anyway. But we're going to in the next lesson import another CAD plan with our lighting on it and we'll have to do that all again. Uh, the Eagle Eye amongst you might notice that I've suddenly got a WYSIWYG Learn sticker down here. This is because my Perform license expired last week. Um, I had renewed it because I had some projects to do um, uh, and those of you that are watching this in end of March 2020 uh, you know you'll be living through the virus as I am at the moment and there's no reason for me to renew my license when there's no work so uh, I am using a learn license which Rose River College um, has as part of its training uh, package so it's absolutely legitimate for me to be using that how to keep justifying why I have student licenses and, um, and educational licenses this is uh, being supported by Rose Bruford College, uh, our Centre for Digital Production is, is something that I'm uh, affiliated to. I'm working as their the head of it. So uh, this is uh, justified use of the WYSIWYG Learn dongle. Um, if, uh, if it annoys you, just try to block it out. It's not as bad as a student version where it covers the whole screen. So um, you could have had that. So we're going to look at the lighting tools. I've got my um, my views here. I've got, sorry, let's see this one. This is a nice symmetric view. That's why I've not got my toolbar around the outside so I'm going to change that from isometrics back to the left view uh, this one here well that's also left view so I'm going to change that to my front view so click on front so I've got front view there if I click on this one you see my little box there has changed hover over it, it says left view and this one here's my top view so that'll be helpful as we're moving forwards and there's nothing in the shader view and you can see if I move it around you can see the camera moving but it's all black the one thing I like to do when I'm working with lighting uh, because lights tend to be black it's very hard to see them when your background's black. So I like to change my background to be like a dark blue. It just makes it a bit easier to work in. So I right click and I go to view options. And we haven't looked at view options yet. We're going to cover it a lot later when we get to the um, the live mode. But view options is uh, quite a, a nice place for making your scenes look really pretty. Um, if you go to simulation and you've got background color. And I'm just going to change this by clicking on this button to a dark blue. Uh, another one I work on while actually is a light grey. Uh, if you don't like blue, blue offends you. There you go, background is now blue. So you'll see how that's useful in a moment when we start bringing in some lights. Just to reiterate as well, we've been working in the CAD mode the whole time. We haven't, apart from those introductory sessions where I took you through all of these, we haven't yet gone into any of these other modes yet. We're still just working in, in the CAD mode. Uh, but in the next few lessons, uh, we're going to be moving across quite quickly once we've got a production to to show that while we're building everything exists in this in this environment here in CAD. So I'm going to start off by showing you um, how we import uh, lights or how we insert lights. We did cover this earlier but I'm just going to reiterate it because it's kind of essential for what we're about to do. So this here is our pipe tool, this is our curved pipe tool and this is our truss tool. Um, I don't use truss tool at all um, well, at least I don't use it to hang lights, and I'll explain why. Uh, if you bring in a truss, the first thing it does, it brings up your library. You have to go and find the truss. The, you may, you know, if you're a higher company, you have a particular manufacturer of truss that you know that you trust, and you'll always use it, then, you know, knock yourself out. But if it's, say, for instance, I go to Light Structures, Original Section, and uh, God knows what all of these are. For me, this is all double Dutch. I'm guessing 2,000 to 2,000 millimeters. I'm sure light structures, people who work with light structures understand. But I've just double clicked on that and now I can drag it into any of my views, uh, depending on which direction I want to go. And I'll just click and place it like I would uh, a light. And there we go, we've got a nice pretty truss. And if I right click and finish placing truss, I can zoom around and there it is, hidden behind the logo. You see that logo is already annoying. And there's my truss. Um, now the truss tool is quite clever. It's got better in time. When I, when I first started using WYSIWYG, it was really difficult to use. So. Maybe it's partly why I'm, I don't use it. But if I double click on it again, I should be able to. Oh, I see. It's being. Oh, I've got to turn on the feature. Assembly snap, truss snap. And it should lock my truss together. Yeah, let's see what happens. No, it didn't do it. It's starting to see already my frustration with the truss tool and why I don't use it. Let's drag it across. Let's try to. Oh, let's turn that back on. Let's turn on assembly snap as well, just in case that's going to help. 
and uh, uh, uh. is that snapped I don't think it has maybe it has maybe it's overlapped let's look at it in a couple of different views um, the reason that you want to snap trust together is because of course if you've got loads of trust together you want it to be linked so as you move it around it moves a whole lot so there you go see it's moving together if I turn off my ortho orthographic mode I can move it as one piece so that means I want to set a height for it it will move let's turn that one off it will move in one place now the height for the truss is taken by this point here in the middle if you right click go to properties truss or hang structure rather well okay I'm actually proving my point here is one thing you won't see in here is the definitive height of the truss there is there isn't a a point um, obviously in this new tool here it tells you that uh, the Z height the height, we're, in, we're in this mode so it'll be Y is up and down um, it's oh, there you go moving oh no, moving in other direction so it is Z still so we can use this to move it but if I put put this to zero you'll see that zero is to oh look okay no it's down there in the bottom take it back but it's uh, I just find it very hard to work with. They obviously made some improvements since I last used this. This must come out of the last couple of releases. But generally, I find it hard to say this is exactly where the, where the, the point of the light is. The fact that I can't click on uh, my trust tool in my properties menu and see exactly where it is has always frustrated me. Um, because you can do this with pipes. Uh, you can see it up here now. This is a new feature came out two releases ago, as I mentioned earlier. So that's that's good. So you know maybe trust tools are going to be easier to use. Um, what I tend to do is I build a pipe and I've just gone through for interactive there. I'll just do it again in case you didn't see. I clicked on my pipe tool. Uh, I can type in the details manually, but interactive works fine. Um, and I drag that out. Uh, I haven't got all fell on, so I can go in any direction. It spreads from the center. Let's turn on X so it's a nice straight line. Right click. I can set my height straight away. I'm going to set that to 1.2 meters. I know that pipes at 1.2 meters. There's no equivocation. If it was a, a, a weird shaped truss, you might have a... Um, yeah, so some. Uh, yeah, you, you might not know exactly what height it's at. If I right-click, go to properties again. I go to pipe. It will tell me what height it is. It will tell me what the length is. Um, I can even specify the weights of the pipe. Uh, I can also do other things about. I can add borders and legs to it. Um, we were looking at the the um, the drape wizard in the last lesson. I don't actually use it. I use this if I want to do a border. I just click border. Type in the height. So if it's a 1.2 meter high. Uh, border when you can't go higher than 1.2 meters I click apply and now it hangs a nice drape on it it's very pretty it's blue and blue there it's probably not the best color for the background but you get the idea once you've done this we can go into appearance we've got our pipe and now we've got a border as an option that doesn't appear when you first do it incidentally if you if you have turned on the border option let's only do it with the legs I turn on the legs that's gonna be 2.4 meters if I click apply it builds the legs a bit wide let's make them smaller let's make them 0.2 because I don't actually know how wide my pipe is. They yeah, are nice small legs. Uh, if I go to general, oh, go to appearance rather, um, the legs don't appear. You have to clear the window and reload it. Don't ask me why, but there you go. You've got legs left, leg right. Once we've got these, they work a bit like the uh, library items we looked at before. We can then go into the texture library, change the drape color to, to a horrible beige. Uh, let's make the right one a aqua now let's go for something we can see burgundy see against the blue and the border but i'm not going to change it just to mix it up i'm going to change the color to uh to green just pick it directly from the uh, from the color picker and then i can click uh, apply or okay and it will apply the colors so there we go so that's one thing that makes pipes quite useful so you can have lights hanging with drapes um what I do with a default venue that I use all the time, so when I was working at the Royal Opera House, I had every single bar built. They were all labelled. They all had a default height on them, so so I'm from my right click at the moment. So I, I'd have everything labelled as, you know, uh, I could give it a name that made it, um, uh, let's say it's bar 36, and I know what the, the weight limit of that is, and I know what the weight of the bar is, so I can put all that in. I can leave it at default height. I actually have movement controls on the wall, which I could operate via the lighting desk. So I could use um, a separate lighting desk to set all my heights by typing in a, a DMX value. Uh, we'll come to that later when we get to the live uh, live mode. Um, but most of all, it meant that I could just quickly swap a, a lighting bar for a, um, 
a border. I could add a border to it. I could add legs to it. It just made everything really easy, and I could operate those via my, my via my lighting desk. I could turn them on and off as layers because they're all labelled nicely. Um, to label a layer, I uh, saw a, a bar. You come into the hang structure here. You got the position name. Uh, there's nothing in there at the moment because we haven't created any. You have to click on this little toolbar. First thing I do when I start naming pipes is that I name them all. So I will come into the position manager and I could just add one. So I'm going to call this say uh, LX1. Okay. Uh, and I click OK and I can then pick it from drop down window. It's picked it already because there's only one in there. But what I'll actually do is I know that for most shows I'll have an LX2. I'll also have an LX3, an LX4 and an LX5. Uh, and I'll probably have a balcony rail and I'll have, let's see, I, I know the Churchill Theatre they're called slots but they're towers or sort of boom positions, so there's also booms in fact, there are pros booms, I like a little underscore, there's a nice little gaming convention there, um, and I'll probably have boom downstage left, boom downstage right, Boom, mid stage left, boom, mid stage, oh, mid stage right. Uh, can you guess what's coming next? Boom, up stage left, and boom, up stage right. So now I've built those, they're, they're going to exist in the project, they'll stay there. So that's really handy. Uh, sort the positions alphabetically, make it a bit easy to find things. So then I can come through and choose what I want to label that pipe as. So I'm going to call that LX1 in this case. Click OK. So I'm actually going to turn off my drapes, turn off borders and legs from the pipe menu. Click OK. So they've gone. Um, if I am doing something with truss, say I'm doing a, a concert and it's got trusses in it, I just I'll use a truss tool, just I normally would, but I'll then I'll just drag it over the top of it, uh, just so we have something that can obscure lights. It's may seem really excessive to you. Um, you're probably right, but as I say over and over again, this is just my method. <laughs> you don't have to like it. This is what I do. Um, it does come from a position of extensive experience using this software. Uh, a lot of my um, my methods are based on the foibles that WYSIWYG has had in the past, and trust was always something that didn't work properly. So th this is just something I've got used to doing. Uh, what I'll then do is I'll turn this off. I'll put it on its own layer. Uh, just just get rid of it altogether and then bring it back on when I'm ready to put, put the heights of my light, my bars in. If I need to change the height of the bar, it does mean I have to change the height of the truss as well. But when I was using, um, or if I am using a moving, uh, a moving axis to control the height and it's based on DMX values, I just put them both on the same axis and they'll move together anyway. So you end up hanging the light on the pipe and the truss is just there for decoration. Uh, up to you. Go for it with the truss if you feel like it, if you feel feel brave it's is it is fine now i'll just prove to you by sticking stuff together that it kind of works um all of my uh equivocations about it they they've been proved wrong just as i've been been drawing but i'm still going to work the pipes because it's what i know um and i trust it i know why i am so to add a light we go to our fixture tool um when we go to manufacturer we're going to choose a light now i can't remember the lights i use in this production um in fact, I do. I use the Mac TW1. They're really nice lights. Uh, I miss them. So we can go to Martin. Mac TW1. I'm going to do this again in a minute anyway, because I need a plan. I, at the moment, I have no idea where I'm putting anything. But yeah, Mac TW1, wash 80 volt. Double click to select the light. And then I'm going to use my little toolbar up here, or I can turn on my grid to set the set the distance. If you remember at the beginning of the, the very first lesson we did, back at what be lesson six or seven, we um, we set the snap tool. In fact, let's just go over it again, just in case um, you've jumped ahead, which I understand, you want to get straight into lighting. If you go into options, document options, uh, draw defaults, and in here we've got the grid spacing. Uh, I said it's 0 0.5. It starts off at something strange like 0 0.69, which is um, so the, the, the metric equivalent of uh, two feet. So if you are like me and you you like the metric system then uh, change your grid spacing it doesn't matter if you're using the grid uh, you know you don't have to have a grid physically turned on but this is really handy you can snap to the grid or snap to the middle of the grid it gives you either half meter or two and a half meter spacings so if I select that light again and I turn on my grid snap then when I'm placing it 
it's not working. Let's turn on snap down here. <laughs> Why is it doing that? So it should be snapping. But it's not. Okay, we'll come back to that later. I can't figure out the why that's not working. I've got that turned on. I'm specifying. Maybe I've got it set too small. Hang on, let's just go back in and check this again. Document options, 0.5 meters. Yes, that's all correct. It'll come to me later. You can probably see it already. Sometimes when you're teaching, you, you don't see things uh, so clearly as when you're watching. Anyway, I'll come back to that. I'll figure it out for the next lesson and tell you all about it. Uh, I'd normally stop the video and start all over again, but because there's a virus on, I haven't got the time, so we're going to keep going and figure it out later. Um, so that's a half meter spacing. That's a one meter spacing. Um, so I'm going to place that there, a one meter. And then we're going to go in the other direction. When I finish placing lights, I'm going to right click, finish placing fixtures. Um, I'm going to go now to, what else do I have in this show? What else do I have? Honestly, can't remember. Let's just make, make something up. Mac Viper is my favourite light. So, a Mac Viper performance. Just going to click and place that um, again at one meter. And there we go. So you can see those lights going in. When you click on it, you can see the beam coming out of it. That's really handy just for identification. Um, it's also really handy for focusing generic lights. Uh, let's just try that. Actually, let's go to uh, fixtures. Actually, let's do it a different way this time. We can go to type and then conventional uh, ERS and let's go for a 26 degree oh minuet I was looking for a source for but you know let's go back and try again conventional profile uh, it's going to be even harder no HPS bad example type Conventional. Every single thing that you want is in here, but it's just going to get the right name. Um, like Zoom, we might find a etc C source for Zoom. There we go. <laughs> Found it. Uh, so if that doesn't work for you, like it didn't for me, there is another third way of finding a light. Obviously, if I want an etc light, I would go via the manufacturer. Um, I go for type generally if I want a parkan because I'm not that fussy about who makes a power can but you can also as long as you're at the root menu you can search so I'm going to search for source 4 and it brings up all my source 4s um, every single one of them including the lusters which didn't exist when I made this show um, if I am in let's just pick a random manufacturer let's go for micro there we go uh, if I type in source 4 now it won't bring anything up because it's searching within that folder. So you need to make sure you're either in the root or if you know what you're looking for. So for instance, if I go to etc, um, etc, I'm gonna, this is why I went to ERS, you see, because that's where the source files are. Um, I've chosen that. Now I might want to choose, uh, let's think, they're not called lusters in WYSIWYG, which makes it hard to find. Oh, there they are, luster. So it's now found all the lusters in the etc folder. So I'm going to go back. Let's just pick a C. I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to choose a Source 4 Junior because that's actually what we used on this show. I'm going to place one at either end of the bar. There we go. And now we can see those. Now, if I turn my layers back on, this is why I left them in here. If I turn my set back on again. There we go. And now we can start to see. It's starting to look a show now. Look, it just happened to be lined up as well because that's our front of house trust there. Um, I'm going to drag this bar out. Now, I can do this by... Once I've selected it, I can go into a view like this. I can highlight. You see, I've got a little marquee tool on my arrow. There's a little marquee. It disappears when I go away. If that marquee tool's there, that means you've hovered over a selected item and you can do something with it. It does get smaller, though, when you move away. And if you've got to move it quite far, that can be quite difficult. So I can move it up and down. Uh, and I can look at my bar on the left here. That's what shows me how high it's going. So I'm going to go right up here. And it's also notice I've got my orthographic mode on here, so I can make sure I'm dragging it straight up. If that's turned off, I might end up pulling it to the side as well. So that's that's about the right height. Uh, as I said, I'm going to delete this in a minute anyway, because I need this to work in another view uh, using the plan. So I'm going to grab my source form. And you can see it coming on. At the moment, it's just pointing straight down to the floor. If you can't see stuff, I'll go back into that view options mode again that I showed you earlier with the blue background. View options. Turn the ambient light down. It's like dimming the working lights. So you can start to see start to see that beam coming out there. You can also change the beam exposure, which makes it brighter. If you've got too much haze, you can change the actual beam down. 
So I've got my own sort of preferences or settings. I'm going to go through some settings on this later when we get into the design mode. But um, I quite like to have my footprint high, my beam lowish. I like to see where it's coming from. You can also turn on some features that make it uh, make make the beam a bit nicer to look at. Um, I won't change anything else. Just it's good enough for now, so I can show you what you're doing. And there we go. That's the that's the light coming out, and it's hitting the surface. If I uh, want to focus it, you can just drag this beam. So you see the beam coming out, the light is highlighted. So I click on the moving light. I can't really move that because it's a moving light. It's warning me to want to hang my light because I've moved it off the bar. Um, but if I grab my my source four, I can move that beam around. Now this doesn't really work intuitively, if I'm honest. Um, there's some other methods to to focusing lights and we're, we're going to come to this later anyway so I'm not going to go into it in too much detail but I just wanted to show you where that where that was and why it's useful to have that beam um, if you wanted to see a moving light uh, on the set uh, we're going to get to that in the design mode and the live mode because we can't move a moving light in CAD mode it's it's just not possible it needs to have some sort of input which we can do via design and live so we're gonna leave that for now um, now we're going to move on. I'm going to actually delete all this. I'm going to delete it now. So I'm just going to demonstrate something. I'm going to click and drag and move this light away. Do you want to leave your fixtures unhung? OK, I do. Um, it's done that because a light has to be placed on a, a hanging surface. Even if it's on the floor, it needs to have a fixing point. It just doesn't allow you to, to place a light in midair with no, 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 um, no pipes or, or trusses involved so when you get that option it asks you to delete or unhang so if i hit delete now on my keyboard um, it gives you an option to delete or unhang they notice when i moved the, the moving light away it said are you sure you want to unhang this light and i said yes um now here i've got the option you see, i can make this always delete so this window doesn't come up unhang is something uh, a bit unusual you don't i don't know if you, i've never used it i don't know anyone that uses it and i'll explain it anyway just so you get it but just to demonstrate, I'm going to go delete, and then I'm going to set this moving light. I'm going to go again, delete. I'm going to go with this one, and this time I'm going to choose unhang because it's a source four. So I've now unhung one Mac TV one and one source four junior. And in this case, I'm not going to delete the light. I'm going to delete the pipe. So if I hit delete on the pipe, it says hang structures contain fixtures that are not selected. Do you want to delete anyway? Yes, I do. Um, what that means is that it's recognized that I may have not realized that I'm trying to delete a pipe that has lights that I'm trying to keep because I haven't selected it. So it's going, well, hang on, you haven't told me you want to delete that light as well, but inevitably when you delete this pipe, the light's just going to be hanging in midair. So it has to be deleted. So I say yes in this case, but half the time I'm saying no. And then what do I want to do with that light? I'm going to delete it this time. So the unhanging option actually appears in this flight case. If we go over to the flight case tab. Flight case is something that I can imagine is useful for venues with a stock of equipment or maybe uh, you know sort of production companies that travel around and, uh, and make uh, make different productions using a stock set of kit um, that they, they always own. If we go into unassigned fixtures, you'll see our light. I don't know where the source four has gone though. Hmm. There he is in LX1. So these are all my positions and it's kept that there. Oh, that's because of course I deleted it. I moved this one off the pipe. So it's gone to unassigned fixtures and this one was on LX1 when I deleted it, so it's left it there. So the point of this is, is that you would um, you'd fill up your unassigned fixtures of all of the stock that your company has. So you might want to fill it up with you know a dozen source fours, two dozen washes, you know, some moving lights, your lighting desk. So you have it all in there and you can assign them all, you know, fixed references. I think you right click, you can add accessories to it, you can make sure it's all set up as it would be. Um, in your warehouse and then as you're applying fixtures to the um, to the to the project you can assign it from the flight case so I've deleted my my pipe now but let me just put another one in just to demonstrate I should be able to it's been a while since I've used it click and drag that light out of there and put it on the pipe and it's now left unassigned fixtures and it's now gone to where did it go where did it go hmm. Ah, it's probably because I haven't named this pipe. It hasn't appeared here. But the point is, it's now left your flight case. So it means that you don't have access to it anymore. 
So if I delete it, select it, delete, unhang, and there it is back in there again in no position in unassigned fixtures. So it's just a way of you managing your stock. It's kind of a like a business tool really. Um, it's never been that useful to me because, I mean, who, well, maybe it's unfair, but at, certainly at the Royal Opera House, we had enormous stock of equipment in our in our stores, but we hired so much stuff anyway for shows. Um, and it wasn't really up to the WYSIWYG team to manage what was available in the stores and what wasn't. Um, as I mentioned in an earlier lesson, I used to use insertables, which are in here, and I won't go over it now, but um, you can go back to an earlier lesson and have a look. I think it was in uh, definitely chapter three. It might have been around lesson 14 or 15. Uh, we looked at how insertables work. I used to create stock objects. So if I had a, um, you know, we have a rather complicated four kilowatt HMIs on moving auto yokes with custom scrollers and custom dimmers and uh, they were very complicated lights lots of different parts that needed patching lots of accessories um, all different channel types different universes and every single time I built one it was a bit of a nightmare so I created an insertable that lived in my my own WYSIWYG directory and I imported it every time um, so it was just a, uh, a useful way of, of managing a library of, of objects that was separate to the flight case system uh, and for me a lot more convenient so that might be how you want to work so anyway, we're going to abandon this little demonstration of how we import lights. We're going to, in the next lesson, import a, the plan that I've made for Jack Jesus Christ Superstar. And we're going to start building the, uh, the lighting rig.